that idea of optimization is, I think, in many ways behind this. And the idea of optimization is exclusively in the realm of ego, that there are enormous suboptimal decisions that we have made that redirected the course of our lives in such a way that we could actually become who we really are. You know, I put all the data into the AI and I, I should be an accountant or I, you know, this is the exact way to do this, that or something else. And it all makes very logical sense. And yet, you know, it was failing that test in uh, accounting school that made you go, damn it, I guess I'm going to have to go and be an artist instead. And then you became a sculptor. But that's really what you wanted the whole time. But if you had optimized what your ego had decided to do at 18, you may never have made that fateful error, which liberated you from the wrong direction and forced you to have to consider something else. I've been rereading a book um, by Fromm called Escape from Freedom, hmm. which is a wonderful book written by an old uh, Freudian analyst. Right. And, uh, and all of the wonderful technology that we are exposed to, including artificial intelligence, but the automation of innumerable things, the incredible seduction to, to give up our own ability to engage something, to think through something, to make our own choices, even if they're wildly idiosyncratic mm -hmm. about any number of things, that there is an incredible seduction to want to have someone, something else, someone else do it. You know, it goes to that fantasy that if I won the lottery and I had a billion dollars, I wouldn't even bathe myself. I'd have people feeding me on grapes with their own hand. Mm -hmm. And the fantasy is, well, that I would, I would literally like be a baby. That, that's the ultimate fantasy is that I'd just kind of loll around, have people rub my feet all day. Um, which is incredibly seductive. Yeah, I saw you uh, yeah, smile, like, Lisa. That, that, that's that's that could nice. work. Robots that rub your feet. That's that's it'll be a fleet of them. So anyway. <laughs> 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 with the automatic driving cars, you'll push your buttons. <laughs> it'll drive up to the front of your door, and you'll just hop in. Um, but but that is really the existential piece of it. That is the deep, deep, deep mm -hmm. piece of all of technology is um, when we yield to something that's going to do it for us, fill in yeah. the blank, um, what does that do to the human psyche? Um, and of course, there's great benefit. I mean, look at all the machines, the cotton gin for that matter. You know, these machines have, have taken some onerous tasks out of human beings' hands. But now we're in a really different place where there's the possibility that we can program machines to tell us what to eat, uh, tell us how to cook everything. Right now, people are wanting AI to take all the technology they can and tell them exactly how to exercise so they'll get optimal results. So this idea of giving, giving away choicefulness because we're sure that the other is going to be wiser mm. than we are and give us something better than we could imagine for ourselves. And that's um, that idea of optimization yeah. is, I think, in many ways behind this. And the idea of optimization is exclusively in the realm of ego. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That there are enormous suboptimal decisions that we have made in our own lives, we don't even have to look into antiquity, suboptimal decisions that redirected the course of our lives in such a way that we could actually become who we really are. Yeah, uh, I yeah, see, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. The right way to wholeness is full of fateful detours and wrong turns. That's right. Right, we have you know, to, I put yeah. put all the data into the AI and I, I should be an accountant or I... You know, this is the exact way to do this, that, or something else, and it all makes very logical sense. And yet, you know, it was failing, failing mm -hmm. that test in uh, accounting school that mm -hmm. made you go, damn it, I guess I'm going to have to go and be an artist instead, and then yeah. you became a sculptor. But that's really what you wanted yeah, yeah, the no. whole time. Yes. But if you had optimized 
what your ego had decided to do at 18, you may never have made that fateful error yep. which liberated you from the wrong direction and forced you to have to consider something else that um, your ego would not have chosen otherwise. The fateful mistakes that we're That's, going to be yeah. removing from life and the fantasy that that's going to make it really great. So we're, we are in the realm of uh, the, the myth of Prometheus mm. and kind of this incredible technological ability to do these things that we're, we're only probably just beginning to even imagine. And what does that mean? You know, Prometheus stole fire from the gods and gave it to humans, and it was supposed to just belong to the gods. Mm-hmm. And it seems like with AI, it's another, it's another thing that we're taking from the gods and giving to humans, and that can have some incredibly positive effects, but it can also be quite destructive always, always these things are. Um, you know, I, I, I want to share, because it seems relevant, that I recently had a dream that I think is related to this. I'm not going to share the whole dream, but I'll share an image from the dream. The image was that there was a colony on the moon. There was a lunar colony, and it was all very, very exciting. But I was thinking, about, I was trying to understand that image. And of course, a, a colony on the moon would be entirely dependent on the Earth to provision it, and it would be kind of sterile. And, uh, and it, 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 it also, it really is this image of like so much that's kind of out there that isn't really kind of literally grounded in the Earth. And I, I think the dream possibly after sitting with it and working with it um, actually relates to the dream book that jo- Joseph, Deb, and I have been writing because one of the things that we've done, I think, I think we've done this and I'm both excited and maybe a little bit trepidatious about it as well, is really created a protocol for working with your dreams to the extent that... Um, it, it it may it may have um what's what's the word I'm looking for? It may have kind of ta- it might have taken the mystery out of it a little bit. So I think it will be very effective at helping people work with their own dreams, but it also may have demystified it a bit too much. It might be or or maybe that's the that's the fear that I have in the dream. There was a kind of compensatory image of a talking rat. That um, that was, uh, I think, uh, hopeful. But but you know, there there is this sense. It's like wow, you know, if you if you uh, like, we would never want to. Um, and of course, Jung says we can't. But you know, Jung says you can't empty the unconscious. But could AI empty the unconscious? Oh boy! You know? Yeah, I I, I really doubt that. I I, I well. I don't know. I, I I have great faith in the the um, <laughs> the ability of the unconscious, particularly the collective unconscious, to come up and grab us by the nape of the neck when we're not looking and shake everything. And now, I know, I, 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 I the Joseph, your your idea of we we lose the fateful mistakes. Boy, I think. I, I would never underestimate the psyche and, and the collective unconscious ability to go and say, oh, yeah, you guys think, you know, you, you know what's going on. I mean, this is Sorcerer's Apprentice stuff. You know, yes. Like, watch. Yes. <laughs> watch yes. what. We, we, we'll give you some fateful mistakes. Right, but, but it's Jurassic then it's Park. so destructive, yeah. right? <laughs> True. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it could be if, it, 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 you know, to your point that if we just go forward saying, yes, optimize, yes, more, yes, this, yes, yes. That that it's going to come and say uh, no. All right, now you get Jurassic Park. Now you get you know. There's that famous uh, interviewing quote from Jung. I think it was a Good Housekeeping magazine or something that he was being interviewed by, and he says, "God is the name by which I designate all things which cross my path violently and recklessly. All things which alter my plans and intentions and change the course of my life for better or." For worse, that was good housekeeping. I adore wow. that one. <laughs> That's yeah, a great my, one. Yes, my favorite. And, yeah. like, and how how hard we're working to make sure that never happens. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Exactly. And yeah. I get that. I mean, who wants violent interruptions to one life? 
Mm-hmm. But it goes to what you were saying, John, is, well, we thwart the unconscious by optimizing and having this wonderful logical algorithms, you know, inform us in multiple fantastical ways. And how might the unconscious or the God within the unconscious mm-hmm. take Old of us to violently disrupt that because it becomes more and more difficult to reach us. Yes. To, to what lengths yes. might the unconscious go? Yeah, to, absolutely. To reclaim its place. Um, that's sobering. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, the, 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 there's a bit of irony in that, in that, you know, I tend to look to my dreams to try and figure out the ways in which my unconscious is trying to slap me around or adjust me. Mm-hmm. Or, right. Oh, no, you're going the wrong way. You're being goofy in this way or that way. Um, <laughs> but then you apply, you know, an AI in there to try mm-hmm. and further optimize the understanding of those exactly. dreams. Exactly. And the symbols and so forth. And so in what way will that? So, it's a wild experiment it is Mm -hmm. and i applaud you for conducting the experiment because (laughs) i think i mean truly life is about experimentation it is the human venture eat this see what happens farm that (laughs) see what happens build this see what happens Uh, and and sometimes great things happen and sometimes Mm -hmm. uh, it's tough Mm-hmm. But I, I very much like that spirit of experimentation that is alive and well in you. <laughs> Thank you. My, uh, my, my analyst, when I undertook this, kept telling me, like, this, it's impossible. You can't do, it, this is impossible what you're trying to do. You should do it anyway, but it's impossible. <laughs> and he's been an analyst for 50 years. I'm like, and the more I do it, the more I realize, hey, he's probably right, but eh, do it anyway. See what happens.